It's all pro tight end Rob Gronkowski. And nothing fuels my patented Gronk spike like all natural Alberto beef jerky. Lean beef, slow cooked, and seasoned to perfection. It's all natural and all delicious. Don't take a chance with some wimpy snack. Go with protein packed, all natural Alberto beef jerky. Alberto beef jerky. You get out what you put in. Refer to Alberto's all natural line of beef jerky. Minimally processed, no artificial ingredients. This is the Stephen A. Smith Show. Usually the day after the All-Star Game, quiet time. Time where not many things are going. Usually this is a day where you, you find those stories that are kind of what's called evergreen. Right? You can argue with them at any point of the year. But leave it to the New York Knicks to make sure that we don't have one of those days. The report comes out earlier today from Adrian Wojnarowski that the Knicks are engaged in trade discussions with the Houston Rockets, working on a deal for, yes, Carmelo Anthony. The discussions, that they don't just involve the Rockets and the Knicks, but now reports are they involve up to four teams. The report says that the sides are motivated, but no agreement is imminent. But that they are continuing to discuss trades. And here's the thing. It won't happen today. But what you have seen from this Knicks offseason is clear. This deal will eventually take place. And I can make a couple of predictions about it right now. First off, the first thing I'll say, whatever's the worst probably for the Knicks is what will end up happening. Take a look at what the Knicks have done this offseason. They let the team president pick the draft, and then they fired the team president. They sign free agents before they find who they want to be their GM. They overpay as they generally do. They refuse to allow someone that they're going to hire to have their own people in place. But instead, keep the people they have that have not worked. And once again, as I have brought up time and time again, the Knicks have allowed their biggest advantage to go to waste. What's their biggest advantage? Salary cap space? The talent? No. None of those things. They have an advantage that I would say that no other team in the NBA, or at least very few teams in the NBA, could ever possibly hope to have. And that is that a rebuild would not hurt the Knicks in any way. It would not hurt the fan base. It would not hurt ticket sales. It would not hurt Madison Square Garden because there is a large portion of the Knicks fan base that is completely delusional. That no matter how bad things have gotten, and look, in this city right now, there's a lot of bad teams, but yet for it's, it's pretty clear that with the way things stand right now, the Knicks are at the bottom of the list because it's not just about bad basketball. Most of the time, almost all of the time, they also turn out to be a punchline. So as you take a look at the landscape of New York sports right now, you have the Jets who apparently look to be tanking on the season. You have a Nets team that has no draft picks for the foreseeable future. The Islanders can't even find a place to play their games. The Mets have every single player hurt And their mascot is flipping off the fans. But yet, even with all that going on, no New York team is further away from a championship than the New York Knicks are. And I have no doubts that when this trade happens, when this move happens, the Knicks will find a way for it to be the most detrimental to them. Because there, is, there should be no rush on the Knicks' part to trade Carmelo Anthony. None. He, he, he's not going to be holding them back from doing whatever they're going to do this upcoming season. This upcoming season doesn't really matter if you're looking to build a championship-level team. Time is on the Knicks' side. 
So while Mello's trade value has never been lower, it's hard to envision a scenario where it's going to be lower later. It's hard to envision it, unless unless he somehow blew out his knee, which I guess is in in any sport is a possibility. But it's hard to envision a scenario where his trade value is lower later than it is now, but yet the Knicks are desperate, it seems, to move him now. And maybe that's part because of the way they have squandered what salary cap space they have, but that's just another example of how it's not going in the right direction. And you know this trade is happening not because of anything the Knicks say or anybody says. Chris Paul told Mark J. Spears of the Undefeated when asked about Carmelo Anthony being on the Houston Rockets. Quote, man, sit back and wait. And that's the bit. That, that, I mean, I trust that more than anything to let me know that, yes, Melo is eventually ending up with the Houston Rockets. My only fear is that the Knicks are having this desperation to move him now for some reason. And I don't get it. And we're going to talk with Ian Begley at 2.30 this afternoon, so maybe he can give me some answers. Because with the Knicks, there's lots of questions. I have lots of questions. I can't figure out what they're doing, and I don't think that they know what they're doing. So while you can sit back and see, oh, well, maybe, maybe finally the Knicks are going to get it right. We had that one week where it looked like, you know what? Maybe the Knicks are going to do this right. First, you get the Tim Hardaway signing. You get Ron Baker back for $9 million. And now there are seemingly in a rush to trade even a diminished asset for pennies on the dollar. Round and round it goes with the Knicks, and it never goes anywhere that other than where they are right now. It's amazing to me that they continually get it wrong time and time and time again. 1-800-919-ESPN, 1-800-919-3776. All right, let's open up the phones. Let's start it off with uh, John on Long Island. John, you're first up on ESPN New York. Hi, how's it going? What's going on, John? Um, so I totally agree with you. I, See, I, I, we're I just... bringing people together on the Stephen A. Smith Show. First caller of the day. We're in agreement. All right, John, continue, please. Yes. Why are the Knicks in such a rush to trade Carmelo? It, it shows pure desperation on their part. And in showing this desperation, they, um, they, they have no upper hand, and they're going to make an awful trade. Um, would it be so bad to keep him just maybe like, a, like throughout the season, see maybe even make the playoffs, the East is so bad? Well, and just wait till a good trade comes their way and then go for the trade. That's the thing, Instead John. Of, you're, you yeah. just asked me, what would, be, what would be so bad with holding on to him? Uh, nothing. But that's, uh, not, it, it's amazing. You can see that, John. I can see that. But apparently the Knicks can't see that. They're, 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 they're in a desperate state to trade a guy who has some value. And it's pot, you know, that's the thing about assets. Sometimes their value goes down, but it's also possible that sometimes that value goes back up. And if you're For not sure going to... sure will go back up. Right, yeah. of course. Now, look, it did get hurt. I, if I, th- I, I did think that when Gordon Hayward was still going to decide on what to do, um, if he had re-signed with Utah, that would have really helped the Knicks out. Uh, that didn't happen. So that did kind of hurt him because just having another team looking for a score, I think that would have brought Boston back to the table. And who knows? But the hardest part of the entire equation with Mello has already been accomplished. He has already, according to all the reports, made it clear that he is willing to waive the no-trade clause in the right situation. That was the hardest obstacle to uh, overcome. Because until you overcame that obstacle, nothing else mattered. It didn't matter if you had a good trade. It didn't matter if you had a good situation for Mel to go to. Until he said he was willing to waive that no-trade clause, he was not going anywhere. Now at least he says he's willing to do that. Now it seems like he's only willing to do it to two teams, Cleveland and Houston, and neither of those teams really have anything that the Knicks would want. But you've, you've cleared that obstacle. You're telling me that if you held on to Mello and said, well, you know what? We can't make a deal with Houston. We can't make a deal with Cleveland. We're going to have to go on to the season like this. You're telling me that Mello is going to be cool sitting here 
cooling his heels on a bad Knicks team, going no place as he's getting older? No. There's a better, there's a better possibility that he'll expand that list of teams that he'd be willing to go to, and that expands the possibility that you could actually get something of value. This is the Stephen A. Smith Show. We've been talking about, of course, the Knicks, the report that uh, the Knicks and Rockets discussing up to a four-team trade. I don't remember the last time there was a four-team trade. I feel like, though, uh, it would be easy to get teams involved because they realize that the Knicks are going to be involved. So it's almost like when your wife calls you and says, oh, well, I'm at the store. Do you want anything? They're closing this store down. They're giving stuff away for free. Do you? Yeah, pick me up a pair of shoes. I can always use an extra pair of flip-flops. Give me some. Because you know you're going to turn. It's probably going to turn out all right for you if you are one of the other three or four teams uh, involved. Uh, and, and what really worries me, and before we get back to the phones at 1-800-919-ESPN, 1-800-919-3776, is like if this deal opens up more cap space, I'm terrified for what the Knicks will do with it. They just spent $80 million on Tim Hardaway Jr. and Ron Baker. Was there a 14 trade before the draft? Yeah, the 76ers and Celtics, that switch of the pick. Oh, was there was four, four teams. teams involved in that. Four teams. See that? I had no idea. It happened all the way back last month. No. Uh, all right, 1-800-919-ESPN, 1-800-919-3776. Let's go back to the phones, shall we? We already had callers uh, agreeing with me, which I love. Uh, let's go out to Jason in Suffering. I don't, know, I don't know if that has anything to do with his Nick fandom, but he's in suffering. All right, Jason, what's up? Hey, Gordon, how's it going, man? What's going on? So, I, yeah, I called in to say I definitely disagree with you. Oh, uh, wait a second. We just we were coming to an agreement, Jason. We were all on board. That's how life rolls sometimes. Oh, I mean, goodness. you got to have a little bit of salt and a little bit of sugar, you know. All but right. nevertheless, you know, I like both. what it comes down to, what what good? Uh, you know, I'm saying this humbly as a Knicks fan of 15 years. What good does it get us to be the seventh, the eighth seed, to make it to the first round? You're you're probably a very savvy NBA fan, and you you see some of the success that these teams have had in in the recent past. It's hitting in the draft, getting a couple superstars, and going for it. Once we have our couple, well, we have Porzingis. Once we get one or two, then we can start. You know, then we can make waves in free agency. The Knicks need to stop spending. I agree with you wholeheartedly on that part. Jason, I'm not saying to hold on to Mello with the hope of making the seventh or eighth seed. No, my God, that would that would be disaster. If the Knicks make the playoffs next year and are not in the lottery, that that is the worst possible thing that could happen. No, I'm not saying to hold on to Mello with the hope of winning 38, 39 games and making the playoffs. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm saying hold on to Mello because right now, there's not many places that want Mello, and the places that he'd be willing to go to don't have anything to give to you. Like, the Rockets don't have anything to give to you. Like, Ryan Anderson's contract? Oh, my goodness. That's even, that's even worse. Stop making it worse. That's the first thing. Don't make the situation worse. First rule of making a trade. And look, it's possible it always gets worse uh, because if the Knicks do open up more cap space, who knows what they they're going to sign Tim Hardaway Senior to a max deal? Who I mean, anything's on the table. Anything's on the table. All right, uh, let's go out to uh, James in Jersey. James, you're next up on ESPN New York. Hello. Yes, James. Oh, okay. thanks for taking my call. All right. Now, I've done I've done my homework All on right. this. Yes, and, and if you give me an opportunity, I will convince you that Mills is our guy, and that that the signing of Tim Hardaway Jr. was pure genius. Oh. Was analytic- <laughs> How, we it, only it, have it, a two-hour show. We are not going okay, to be on that okay. long, James. But go ahead, okay. give it your best shot. All right, now this is an analytics approach, mm. and there are 30, 30 NBA teams mm. now out of. Now, out of 30 NBA teams, there are 21 dominant point guards. There are eight dominant two guards. There are there are 12 dominant three. Uh, all right, James. All right, we get it. James, tell me how the Hardaway move was a good move. Okay. Now, if you only have eight dominant, you only have eight dominant two guards. Right. Then, if you have a, a if you sign a player that is slightly above average, the percent you the percentage of you being outplayed is only 30 games. Out of eighty, 
So what what you did now is for the next four years you bought you 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 paid for a guy that allowed you to have the advantage more times out of not. But Jay, you know, but James, they 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 paid him twice as much as what he's worth. It's not even – look, the Hardaway move, it's not even about Hardaway as a player. I like Hardaway as a player. This is not the typical move where the Knicks take some scrub and they sign him to some contract. I'm not saying that at all. But there's more to it than just Hardaway himself. It's the contract. It's the, fla- the, the cap flexibility that you gave up for the next four years for a player who's not wor- – even if he's better than what he has been, which with the Knicks, when was the last time that happened? When was the last time the Knicks signed somebody and he got better with the Knicks? You said, wow, what a bargain. I don't, I, I literally don't remember. Now, keep in mind, I didn't remember the last time there was a four-team trade and it happened at the draft, but really think about that. When was the last time that the Knicks got a guy and you said, wow, this guy, what a bargain this guy is. No, Eddie Curry does not qualify. T- Ty Butler trying to... No, of course not. That's my point. All right, let's go out to Nick in Stanford. Nick, you're next up on uh, ESPN New York. Hey, Gordon, thanks for taking the time. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. What's up? So, I had been hearing things like the uh, the Rockets and the Cavaliers don't have a lot of assets. No. If it were to, if it were to be a Carmelo trade, that's why we're hearing rumors about a fourth team. Now, what do you think about trying to get someone like LaMarcus Aldridge? Because... There were rumors that people were, uh, the Spurs were trying to shop him during the draft. And no one had interest, but it would be nice to potentially get younger and you know have a rim protector. And I don't know, just it feels like Melo just drags the team down. I mean, he's he's a, towards the end of his career, and like like you said, he doesn't want to be resting his heels on the bench with a, a team that could be subpar. And it, it just seems going younger. And well, look, Nick, if, hey, if you're asking me, would Lamarcus Aldridge? Uh be uh, a complete ter- – no, he's not a terrible player, but it's more important at this point for the Knicks to realize where they are in the process. They're nowhere close. This is not about rebuilding. This is about building. <laughs> rebuilding signifies that you've done it already and now you're going to start over. No, the Knicks are starting from scratch. They're building the house where there are right now trees. They have to clear all that out and then start. But the problem is that the Knicks think they're picking out what style of kitchen they're going to have. They don't even have walls. This is the Stephen A. Smith Show. You're listening to Love Advice with Leanne. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Leanne. Long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> Why, in your professional opinion, do you never take my calls off the air? Is this Carl? Yep, it's Carl. I mean, we had a few dates. Everything was great, I thought. Uh... Well, you know... When you switch to GEICO, you could save a lot of money on car insurance. Okay, awesome. You should call them. I will. GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer.